speaking true. Yep. Welcome everybody. This is Nikos RPG. I'm Jonathan Albin, and it is uh, a Friends Day afternoon. Happy Friends Day. Yeah. Evening. Evening. Afternoon. Yeah. It is an afternoon someplace. Probably in Hawaii. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of building character and to, to a lot of people's ideas when you speak of that in reference to role play games they consider it to be the uh, process and ritual by which you make, create a series of random numbers that define the persona in some fashion and then establish the numeric equivalent of a framework upon which you build the story that you're going to tell as a player. And then that's the building of the character. Once the character has been built, you are done. And what I'm referring to when I speak of building character has more to do with what you are and what you become as a player in terms of your personal character. When you engage in a role-playing game, there are so many different ways to approach the process that we could be talking about a situation where you are not building character at all. As a matter of fact, you are perhaps testing the boundaries of your moral framework by doing things in the game that you wouldn't do in real life. And that can be taken to extremes and many role-play games, most role-play games, I would argue, are set up so that your objective is to actually terminate, uh, end the lives of monstrosities. And there is a level of that that is accurate. The idea that taking down a, a foe or an enemy ends a conflict or stops something bad from happening and that certainly is a, a noble cause can be a noble cause especially if that thing that was being done <clears throat> was particularly uh, heinous or dangerous or uh, life affecting for the civilian population you know the classic there's a monster in the woods and it's eating our sheep you're taking out a threat to the community by killing the wolf, for example. And when the, we're talking about building character, it's so much more than just the process of rolling a bunch of dice. So I think it's interesting that the duality of that phrase almost often, almost always turns towards the uh, simplistic and coarse definition instead of the deeper and enriching one. I think that, I don't think it's by design, but it's certainly a, an interesting take on a double entendre, I suppose. So what are your thoughts? If, if, you, if you're a, a game master in your own right, is the character building process only something that happens at the beginning? Or do you use the opportunity to drive the story uh, towards uh, improved moral ter uh, not moral ter turpitude like to avoid moral turpitude when a, a, a player enters a games group if the understanding of what the great group is about is not well known the distortion between what the player wants to do in terms of how they perceive role-playing games to function can be wildly different from the other players in the group and thereby create pockets or areas of vacuum that lead to uh, the party having uh, dissociative issues. They, they, they can't work together because one or more of them is operating in a 
uh, moral vacuum. They're not, they're not establishing themselves in the same way. And so, now granted, every game master is different, and there are game masters out there that are going, right now, slamming their fists against the roof of their car, saying, this guy's crazy, he's completely wrong, or they're um, banging on their desk or throwing their dice across the room because they don't see the nuance, I suppose. And, and to them, it would be the, the uh, control issues of you know, the, quote, moral individual to be trying to drive the story and direction away from what the just do anything motif. So it's important to kind of decide is the game that you're playing one that's going to establish or help to, but to develop a building character. This point is kind of brought home when you look at the number of people who are watching videos constantly and, and researching the build mechanisms in the games that they're playing looking for the stackable combos, find, finding the places where one uh, rule promotes the action of another rule, which promotes the opportunity for a broader expansion of the possibilities, and therefore the kind of like the reduction of uh, moral anchors. Don't get me wrong, there are games that the role play games even that when you play them you are breaking the the barriers of morality you're doing things that are questionable you're um, taking actions that would by themselves independently get you thrown in jail maybe but for example if you're playing a <coughs> pardon me uh, a, a comic book cartoon style game like Toon, or in my case, Dastardly Squirrels. That's another whole story. The, the elements of it that are ridiculous are expressly so to point out the ridiculousness of actions that would be the analog in real life. You don't you know, you don't drop a car on somebody. You don't, you know, you know sh shove, shove boulders off cliffs to hit the rabbit in the road. You, you just don't do that. And yet, in some games, that's a perfectly viable option because the boulder is going to break into a thousand pieces and they'll have a little circle of birds around their forehead for a while, but it doesn't cause them to be, pardon me, eliminated from the game. It's just simply a mechanism so that you can utilize hyperbole. And that's all. Uh, sometimes I feel like I pontificate, and I, I, it isn't that I mean to, but when I'm speaking of building character, what is, what is it that you do in your game session that lets the, your players feel that advancement? To some people, it is literally just the checklist of, oh, okay, I made it to third level, so now I'm going to take that extra level now in this skill, and it's going to grant me this new mark or this new um, feat. And then with this feat, then it's going to amplify the effects of that other action and therefore starts this process of mechanizing your character, uh, making it now less human, less personal. Instead, you make it more of a force of nature in the game. Therefore, they, they he or she can, can uh, avoid or look past the rules and mores of the culture because you can now do things that are defying physics or whatever. When I, when I, I, I realized that my, 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 my processes here on the channel 
are non-conforming and and then they themselves are perhaps interfering with the direction that the show could go if I would follow their mechanisms. I, I think too much and speak too slowly and drag out a concept over two or three sentences that I might have been able to say quickly. And I hope that's uh, not standing in my way. The, the real reason for coming on the air and talking about building character, I think, is that the, the older I get, the, the closer I get to the uh, departure point. Uh, in my case, it's still 55 years from now, I'm going, going to be making it to 111. The closer I get to that, the more I think about what output, what outcome have I provided that is of worth to humanity. Uh, there's a philosophy that I, I attempt to follow. Of course, with anything else, it's, it's uh, perhaps high-minded to think I could even accomplish it, but the concept of ikigai, a philosophy that was generated, if you will, uh, on the island of Okinawa that says that you need to balance what you love with what you are capable of doing, what you can get paid for, and what you love. When, when you can get those, those four things to line up and mesh, then you have happiness. And I certainly have had a happy life, and I certainly still continue to have a happy life, and I'm enjoying the world that I'm in, but there's so many things that I'm doing to uh, a lesser effect than that's possible. And so as I build character for the individuals who play with me, I'm endeavoring to build my character to a higher point. And that I sometimes feel like I, I'm not achieving. And so there is a introspective or uh, yeah, inter, uh, introspective component of building character that has to happen. And that is what am I actually doing and what effect am I having? And sure, deriving a pleasurable afternoon and understanding the composition of the games group and, and how you interact with it is is a positive thing. The question becomes, is it really improving the world? And so it's, I think, important to, to take a look at that when you are uh, creating your adventures. Is there a purpose or a point? Uh, if, if, it's, you know, if it's merely I'm wanting to set up thresholds for my players to feel a challenge but you're not taking into account the advancement of that individual as a person within the story, I think you're missing a, a, con, boy, a considerable number of possibilities that really would assist and enhance your player's direction. Man, this is one of those days when I can talk and talk and it seems like I'm not, not, not progressing in, in terms of, of time. It feels timeless. And I guess, in a way, that's exactly what we want to aim for, right? We want to be in a place where the chronology of our life is not a factor in our life. Because when we're looking at the, say, the looking down the barrel of a gun of, of, of death and uh, moving on in the world to other planes, that takes us to a place where we're not actually being of any earthly good. And so I endeavor instead to make the game sessions I play not only a enjoyable story, but also kind of a morality play. And again, there are game masters who are going to throw up their hands and say, that's not your purpose. This is, this is, this is a release. This is an escape. This is um, 
my my imagination and I want to run with it and see what's possible. And that's that's perfectly fine. But what I have found is that the games that have a enriching moral fi fiber tends to put the players in a position where when they do a, a great and wonderful thing that does indeed affect a community in inside the game, they are made better. They, they now think differently. And I think that's really the purpose for it. This is going to be a short one. I pretty much covered what I really wanted to say. And uh, as, as our viewership has not catapulted yet, I, I keep, keep endeavoring to try. I know they say if you do the same thing over and again and get and expect different results, you're not really being crazy. So maybe I will be sitting in the echo, echo chamber of my mind like this perpetually. And maybe that's a good thing. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for being here, for watching. If there's something that I'm saying that you'd like to support, uh, check out our Patreon account at patreon.com slash Nikos. And you can actually become a part of our community and be eligible to be uh, one of the players in our games on Saturdays and Sundays uh, by that process. Also, make sure you follow us here on Twitch and watch for our videos over on YouTube. All right, this is Jonathan Alvin with Nikos RPG. I hope this has helped to build your character a bit. I know that the very effort of doing this on a regular basis is working on building mine. Talk to you soon.